guys, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here with my dad, Pastor Craig Roders. Hey. Today we have a very special guest who is in studio with us today, and he served as the Chief Border Patrol Agent in Tucson and El Paso sector. And he was serving for 33 years and is now retired, and he's been on Fox, and he was just on with Judge Janine. So it's my honor and privilege to welcome Jeff Self. Jeff, hey, thanks Jeff. so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes, right. and before we get started, Dad, will you pray for us? Pray. Father, I just thank you so much for this day. And as your word says, whatever you commit to you, the Lord, it shall be established. Mm-hmm. We pray you would guide our tongues. You would give us the mind of Christ. I pray like you, Jesus, that we would not fear man and say what man wants to hear. Mm-hmm. We think man wants to hear, but we'll say what is true. Lord, help us to speak what is true, what is right. Help us to wrestle because, Lord, your word says we know in part and we prophesy in part. So we don't have a clear, a perfect understanding of your word. But, Lord, as we speak today, as this is a conversation, I ask you'll help us to really wrestle with the issue of caring for the foreigner, but yet also being shrewd, also saying, wait, if, we aren't, if we're in debt and we're struggling, how can we take on more and more people? So, Father, help us to be balanced. Help us to treat people the way you would treat people. Help us to care like you care, but help us also, as we see, we read in uh, uh, Romans 11, that it says you are both kind and severe. We don't ever think about that. There's times where you say no. There's times where you 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 are going to just be a just judge. So Father, help us to be as shrewd as serpents, yet as innocent as gentle as doves. I pray for wisdom. I pray you'll bless this conversation, and I pray that we'd really. Uh, Get your perspective on the border today, what that means biblically. In Jesus' most powerful name, amen. 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 All right, like we like to tell all of our guests, this is a conversation. So we are going to just, yeah, we interrupt. (laughs) But Jeff, he is a friend of ours, and we really respect him for all you do. You're definitely a servant leader. And you are a man that is humble, and we definitely see that. Can I tell a so, story? Yes, tell you a story. can tell a story. This is a story. It's so cool. We, uh, we don't have uh, cable at our house, and uh, just because I would watch TV all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, not because I'm so spiritual. But uh, so Jeff came to our church, by, I don't know how many years ago, quite a few years ago, maybe eight years ago, seven mm-hmm. years ago. And all of a sudden, all these people are going, Jeff Self's here. Jeff Self's here. He's the head of border. He's the head of Tucson, uh, the Arizona border. Oh, my goodness, Jeff Self. And I just kind of like, I, you know, people tell me a lot of things. So I was like, okay. And then uh, I never really uh, talked to him. I never really uh, spent time. You know, I didn't, didn't kind of say, ooh, I got to meet Jeff Self. But that was really cool because we were at uh, we were in L.A., I think, and we were watching Fox News. And all of a sudden we saw, uh, I was going to say Judge Dean, uh what's the name, uh, Apolitano, and Obama. This is when Obama was president, mm-hmm. so it was a while ago. And then we saw Jeff right next to him. I was like, whoa, wow, that's why I can't believe it. I know that guy. And so it was pretty cool. But the point I'm trying to make is I really enjoyed how humble he was mm-hmm. that he didn't exploit that. And it was funny because he had a guy that was working for him as a helicopter pilot Ooh. who used to come to our church, and he was one of the most uh, – kind of, how do I say this, arrogant, mean, treating me like dirt. And here's the guy who's over him, way over him, treating me with such respect. So I really respect that as I was telling him off camera that I've never, that I met Charlie Kirk and here is 27-year-old hanging out with the president. You know, he's going to be on, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, the uh, Fox, um, the Jewish guy. Uh, mm, Mike anyway, Levin. Mike Levin, thank you. And uh, and he was just leaving for that, and yet he spent time with us that day. So that's really cool. So that's the kind of character this man has. And I, I if you know me, I don't flatter people very much. There's not too many men I respect except Jesus pretty mm-hmm. much. That's about it. But uh, this is a man I do respect. Mm-hmm. And as he always says, he's not a perfect man, but he's a humble man. And mm-hmm. I really I, mm-hmm. I find that as a quality when someone's high up to be that humble or as he calls himself a servant leader is very few and far between. Yeah. And we'd love for you to just share like how you got into what you did now share and brag about yourself. <laughs> yeah. Now you can, cause I probably messed up on the intro, but you can share. And also the cool thing that we see about you is that you were higher up and then you ended up going down. Like you chose to do chose that. To and so we respect that about you. So could you just share a little bit of your upbringing maybe and how you got to, chief of sure thank you <laughs> and thank you for the kind words Craig. I mean but um so i was uh i was born in modesto california but at a very young age my 
folks uh, moved us, me and my sisters, to Sierra Vista, Arizona, mm-hmm. where they worked on Fort Huachuca. Um, so I grew up in Sierra Vista and um, uh, graduated from Bu- Buena High School. And then I um, ended up uh, going to Cochise College down in Douglas and mm-hmm. spent a couple of years going to school down there. And I like to say I minored in baseball and majored in going to the bar. <laughs> and and um, so, um, like you know, I, through, throughout my childhood i always wanted to be a police officer you know and at 18 i started testing to become uh, a police officer and uh, ultimately i got hired by the u.s border patrol Mm. in in, uh, 1988 and um, how old are you then i was 23 23 24 Mm. and um and uh during that time period, I was also um, dating my wife, Cheryl, and uh, we, we ended up getting married just before I went into the uh, academy and um, then um, uh, ended up going to Uvalde, Texas um, a- as a Border Patrol agent, came back to Arizona and went to Nogales um, after two years in Uvalde, Texas, um, and um, ended up started having kids have four four beautiful children um during that time frame um so i did not come from a family that attended church um my wife did and during that time frame uh we were going to calvary down there with pastor pat um in sierra vista and uh one december um 24th after going to church for a couple of years um God punched me right <laughs> in the middle of my chest and woke me up, mm-hmm. and I still, still get, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, and yeah, right. The amazing thing about that is just the fact that it never snows in Arizona, <laughs> you know. Nope. And we come out from church services mm. uh, on. Uh, christmas eve and it is just snowing like mm-hmm. crazy big yeah. huge flakes and just i i broke down i cried like a baby mm-hmm. and so christmas eve or christmas morning we wake up and my wife gives me a present that she bought me a couple of weeks earlier and it was this bible oh, wow. and uh so you know god god has been at work in my in my life and, and he continues to be at work in my life and how that pertains uh and uh, full disclosure i mean i i i i'm a definite work for the lord Mm -hmm. and i i I, I tend to wander off and he's such a good god because he always brings me back and um um but uh you know went through uh uh the Border Patrol trying to serve uh, the men and women that I've worked alongside and who have worked for me as um, I'm working for them, you mm-hmm. know, and, yeah. and trying to model, um, you know, what I think Jesus did and what he would want me to do and uh, uh, servanthood leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, and ultimately, you know, I um blessed by the Lord. I was in the right place at the right time and received several promotions. I became uh, third in charge of the Border Patrol uh, for four years in D.C., but I wanted to leave D.C., wanted to get you out. You didn't like politics? And get, and get, <laughs> I didn't like the politics yep. and really wanted to get in the field where the real work, work is done. Yeah. And um, so I came back to Arizona and became the commander for um Customs and Border Protection, um, and oversaw all CBP assets and resources within the state for three years. Went over to El Paso after that as chief patrol agent for three years, and then wanted to come home to Arizona to finish my career, and um, came back, uh, busted back again um, to the deputy chief patrol agent of Tucson sector. 
um, and then ultimately retired in that there's an age limit and I reached that age limit and I had had to retire but the point of the point I have to make is and I shared this with you once before is Anita and Dwayne were over yeah. my house one day and you know I talked about a bunch of positions a bunch of roles I played um, they were impressed with the it, pictures of, with you with people. Right? Yeah, they were impressed with. I, I had uh, I had plaques signed by President Bush, by President Obama. Um, I had cufflinks that President Bush had wore that was um, presented to me by sec the first Secretary of Homeland Security, um, Tom Ridge, and. They were impressed by it, and I came home from work, and I was in uniform, and they were ranting and raving about <laughs> all this stuff. And, and, you know, I'm not here to say that my ego hadn't gotten the best mm -hmm. of me at times, mm -hmm. and I think we all struggle yeah. with that yeah. to, to a certain yeah. extent. But you, as a leader, you got to do that ego check, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to humble yourself. And, and uh I, and if you don't, God will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. But, and, judge and, yourself rightly, then be judged. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Corinthians 11. And, and um, I, I looked at him and I said, yeah, you know, Anita Dwayne, I don't see a plaque on the wall saying uh, you fed the poor. Uh, <laughs> you took care of the widows, you, uh, you know, signed by God. And, um, and, and I mean... As a Christian, I think that's what we all strive for is, is God's um, positive nod of yeah, well you're, you're doing well, well you know. You. Yeah. And uh, Border Patrol was very good to me. Um, and um, uh, there were many trials during that time period. And I mm -hmm. investigated for... Um, you know, holding Bible studies in my office, yeah. you know, that's kind of your whole Texas thing, right? You yeah. Say, uh, yeah. You know, and, and, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's a lie from the pit of hell that you can't have a Bible study exactly. in, in a federal office building. Amen. Yeah. And I, uh, was very vocal about that. And really what that spurred me to do is speak more openly about the Lord hmm. when I went over to El Paso, hmm. you know, um, yeah, you know, if you're the black sheep of the Border Patrol <laughs> yeah, leadership well, family, well you know, it just really, yeah, <laughs> Nothing to lose. might as well exploit it. But <laughs> go for it. I'll anyways, that's, uh, that, that's that. it. Yeah. And that's what I think me and my dad, when we, like, always talk about you and we look at you as a man, of that we really respect and looked up to is because you do humble yourself. And like you said, but if not, you know that God will humble and break well, like, you. So. He called himself what it said. It's some, I'm a hillbilly. What you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? I don't, I don't hear too many leaders call them a hillbilly. Yeah. But it's what I like too is that just how um, I love, I think it was Chuck Swindoll says, many men can handle failure because yeah. they have to, yeah. but very few men can handle success. And mm -hmm. like you said, it's a struggle, right? I mean, when, oh, yeah. when I was, you know, I used to be the pa assistant pastor of the biggest church in town, and it's really easy to, you know, think you're something. And then, you know, now I have probably one of the smallest churches in town, but, but I feel like I'm more right with God than I've ever been, even though numerically or outwardly the picture, I don't have the pictures to show anymore. But, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, God's ways are not our ways, right? You know, sometimes mm -hmm. the greatest people are probably... What does Jesus say? He was least here will be greatest in heaven, and he was greatest here will be. So sometimes I go, man, we should probably not be trying to be so awesome all the time. You know what I mean? I don't know what that means, but I'm going, gosh, I said that to a pastor once. I said, well, I, I should be kind of proud about him being so small because that means I'm going to be something in heaven, hopefully. But anyway, so I really, but I really do respect that about you is just that, that, you know, not like you said, not that you're not human. You didn't struggle with it at times, you know, maybe with the accolades, yeah. but you realize at the end of the day, that really doesn't mean a hill of beans if God's not pleased with you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. And what we want to talk about, too, is what's going on in the border right now. A lot of people see a lot of things on the news, and they're, like, freaked out, and they see what's happening to the children, and they're really scared. So what would you say to those people who are overwhelmed and freaked out about what's what they see on the news, what's happening at the border, and what would you say, you know, how— What's they, what should they do? Yeah, what should be happening right now? Yeah, so Mariah, um, you know, I'm overwhelmed and freaked out with what I'm seeing at the border yeah. right now, you know, with, with all these children coming up. And yeah. and we've dealt with it 
many times, but not to the level that we're dealing with it today. Yeah. And, you know, to really kind, kind of coin in a couple of sentences, I guess, uh, about what I'm seeing is you got a very vulnerable class of people um, that were exploited in their country, have been exploited for years and years by corruption, by uh, um, gangs. Right you know, they have poverty, uh, not good health care. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I can't say I wouldn't be doing what they were doing if I had to live yeah. in, in, in that. Yeah. Um, you know, but then they get on this venture coming up here and they're exploited again. Yep. By the drug cartels, by the guides, uh, young women being raped. Um, I've had them in our custody um, many times where you you get briefed on the stories, uh, the horror stories Mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, multiple rapes, gang rapes Mm -hmm. going going on on this journey up here um, to the point where our State Department uh, back in the Obama administration, went went down there and had conversations about putting them on um, uh, drug control uh, mm-hmm. or um, birth, birth control, birth control. Yeah. Um, and um, and so you know they get exploited by the the drug cartels yeah. because now they're criminal enterprises. They're no no longer drug cartels. Uh, anything illicit that moves through the border is, is moved by these cartels. Mm. Um, and so, you know, and, and the, the, they're, it's not just smuggling of aliens, it's human smuggling, sure, human sure. trafficking, so. uh, sex trafficking. Um, and so they're exploited by them. And then they get into the United States, you know, and truly— if God willing, if they make it, because no one doesn't want them to to, we would prefer that they do it legally. Mm-hmm. But what's the alternative? Well, you know, who knows how many are dying on this trip mm-hmm. coming up here? Mm-hmm. And really, from where I sit today, this is the first time I know of in my thirty three career where they're being exploited by the United States government. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they, they were invited up here by this administration, which is a real concern to me. Mm. And truly, um, in talking with the leadership uh, of the Border Patrol that I maintain contact with, this administration is doing nothing to stop them from coming up here. Mm. And, and, and explain, explain one second, too. You're not just a hardcore Republican because you voted. I'm not going to tell what, but you voted for a Democrat. So you're not, you just want the best person, right? Yeah. You're not just a diehard Republican, right? I mean, you care I, about truth. Yeah. I voted for Democrats several times. Yeah. Uh, I voted for a Democratic senator that's serving right now. Yeah. Uh, so you don't just dislike Biden because mm-hmm. he's a Democrat. You no. just like the policy. I, I dislike the politics. Exactly. Um, uh, I, I just, you know. I mean, and it's not just um, border security issues, you know. I mean, that is one that's very dear to me, obviously, because I've seen it's the life. border security apparatus dismantled uh, that we spent building for the last 20 years since 9-11. Mm-hmm. You know, we recognized there was a threat, and this threat ne- needed to be dealt with, and it was southern border. Why was it a threat? Well, you look at the 9-11 hijackers. What did they exploit? They exploited our immigration system, mm-hmm. visa overstays to stay in this country, mm-hmm. okay? And and that's not to say that every visa overstay yeah, is, is, is a terrorist because yeah. they're not. They're people trying to make a better yeah. life. And I think that's back to the shrewd as a servant, right? We got to really balance it because we want to be shrewd, mm-hmm. but we yeah. also want to be innocent to care about these people. Yeah, yeah you can't hate these people for what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. You know, like you, 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 us, you, your, yeah. your heart has to break yeah. for these people. Mm-hmm. I, I mean— if parents are so desperate to just give their child to send them the uh, and send them on their way, there yeah. there's a lot of desperation out there. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is, is you know, there's weights and balances to, mm-hmm. to this, and we can only take on so much as a country because at the end, end of the day, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're going to be dealing with what has happened in the last couple of months for years mm-hmm. and years mm-hmm. and years. And we're spending – do you agree with this? I, I heard – that we're spending on average sixty million dollars a week to house these children. Oh, easy. 
And He's, it says a hundred. Yeah. And Charlie Kirk said there's a hundred and thirty-five billion a year. For, yeah. No. Yeah. No, I went. I, I don't know the numbers. Yeah. I, but you said th- those. Definitely those realistic. make sense. Yeah. No, but no, can, I, can I ask this? I want to ask this real quick. But now explain too, real quick. I mean, you're going to, but but why this administration? Why it's bad? Because you had said to me in the parking lot, we talked about how it's really not. I mean, the the guys is that we really care about humanity. Yeah. But really, you're saying it's a bigger thing of really a future <laughs> for a political stay of exploitation yeah. again. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so you know, they're being way. exploited for their future vote. Yeah, yeah. you That's know, true. I, I mean, they're, 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 the people I've talked to in the Border Patrol, there has been no conversation with the Secretary of Homeland Security or anybody else as to taking the necessary operational actions to stem the flow of these people coming up, mm-hmm. okay? You know, right now they're saying the Vice President Harris is going to go down to Central America and get to the root cause. Well, come on. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could tell you the root cause. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Why well, I, I, I don't need the Vice President <laughs> yeah. to go down to figure out what Take the root pictures. cause is, yeah. okay? It's the same root cause that's been there forever. But why is it so so at the level why are the numbers so high all of a sudden in three months uh, uh, of this administration well i'll tell you 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 just just go back to to uh you you know when all all the democrats were standing on that stage fighting to become the 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 democratic party's candidate and promised health care raise your hand most of those people if not all of them are still serving in, in in the senate or in congress and every one of them raised their hand, mm-hmm. and, you know. Well, who living mm-hmm. in, in in that hell down there wouldn't Want free health care. Exactly. come up if they were invited by yep. the the vice president and Democratic Party? And here here's what this means for the state of Arizona. Mm-hmm. So during 1998 to 2012 timeframe, Arizona was uh, the ground zero for the immigration debate. Why? Because we had an unparalleled level of uh, illicit activity coming across our— it was a chaotic border environment. Mm -hmm. Um, High-speed chases, bodies laying on the highway, Mm -hmm. bodies laying out in the desert Mm -hmm. dying, you know. And it's real impactful, you know. Um, It's not just—I'm going to get off subject here real quick and go back— it's not just the aliens being exploited, it's the agents being exploited. Mm. You know, agents have to go out there and recover bodies, okay? Mm. And those bodies, you know, sometimes are out there for days. They're bloated. Mm. You see you, you see dead children. Sometimes the coyotes, other animals get a hold of them, and you see a half-eaten body, you know? Mm. They've made the job for the Border Patrol agents m- m- much more dangerous, okay? Yeah. But, but at the end of the day— um, here in Arizona, we're, we're, you're going to see the ranchers that live along the southwest border. Their livelihoods are, are going to be threatened again from their ranchers, their, their ranches being trampled. Yeah. Uh, you know, cut fences and cattle mm-hmm. getting out. Um, yeah, uh, you're going to see environmental um, damage done to wilderness areas, you're gonna, uh, public lands. Um, you're going to see wildfires from unattended camp, campfires that are left burning when they pick up, when the aliens pick up to leave. Mm-hmm. Okay. We um, talked about, remember, uh, remember Dan Bell? Is it Dan Bell? Yeah. Yep. Remember yeah. Dan Bell is saying <clears throat> how she used to play basketball with his daughter, but he was saying how he just has to sit there with his guys and watch a bunch of coyotes with machine guns taking a bunch yeah. of people. And he says, you just have to sit there. And it's kind of like, I go, you just sit there. And he goes, yeah, because he goes, they'll, they'll kill us. He said, so we just have to kind of hold our ground and just hopefully they don't do anything to us. And he goes, a few to- I think one time he said a little skirmish with one of his guys, but he says, you pretty much just have to say, just go on through. Yeah. Just don't mm-hmm. bug me. Yeah. Don't touch well, me. I won't touch you. But he's, I said, that is just crazy. I mean, couldn't believe it. This is right from his mouth, you know, telling me how that's normal every day life mm-hmm. well that and that was uh during that two uh, that that time frame when it was worse was around 2000 to the the year 2000 we had 616,000 apprehensions here in this state alone okay mm-hmm. um border patrol wide i think it was 1.2 million or 1.4 million and in this state alone we had 1. 
2,616,000 apprehensions and 1.2 million pounds of marijuana seeds. Mm. Okay. We're going back there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just because people are coming in. It's because the border security apparatus that was built over those 20 years have has been dismantled by this administration because I believe they want these people here. They need to restock their 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 voter pool, and they're tell, doing. Tell, it. tell why in that because you were saying your opinion was my, because because Trump won a lot of those bases. Well, yeah. So, it, it, and, and it's not just Trump. You know, over the course of some years now, the, they they've seen the Democratic Party has seen a decline in their their voter base of minorities, mm-hmm. and and it's drifting slowly. Because they know they're to, being exploited. To, right? Well, yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And they're they're drifting over to the Republican Party, and so you need to restock uh, the, the, the the that that voter pool because Hispanics um, primarily are pro pro life. They're not going to be pro abortion and transgender. I mean, they're pretty conservative as Catholics. Absolutely. Majority. So they're kind of that's a little hard swallow. Absolutely. Right? You know, and I love what we said off off camera. What Reagan said. I didn't leave President Reagan. I did not leave the Democratic yeah. Party. The Democratic Party left me. And I said yep. Sunday, someone said. Can, is there room for a democratic Christian to come to Calvary Valley? I go, yeah, if you're willing to change, because I said, I don't know how you could be a strong Christian and be a hardcore Democrat because you got to do pro abortion. You got to be transgender. You got to say, you know, voting like the R, you know, one voting. I mean, it's kind of hard mm-hmm. to be, to not say there's some conflicts with some of the, the, I was going to say theology, but some of the, the way they think of, of how that they don't believe in, you know, trying to eliminate God and stuff. So it's like, it's hard to be a democratic person now yeah. say, you know, staunch, like you could say you voted for someone, the best person or the least, the best of the worst, right? I guess you yep. could say, but it's like to say I'm a strong Democrat is sort of an oxymoron. If you're a strong Christian, mm-hmm. I, 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 agree with you wholeheartedly yeah yeah you know and the shame of it is is we're going to go back to that 2000 year where people are going to be dying in the desert and thing uh, you know uh, we're going to be right back at a chaotic border environment mm. and our de- democratic elected officials hold the key mm. to making this thing stop mm. a- and a- and they they are doing virtually nothing the only thing they're doing is putting the, they're they're doing enough to say that we've done something yeah. mm-hmm. okay but until they stand up in front of a camera and say that um, you know I'm defecting from the this strategy uh, that the Biden administration ha- has going on uh, I denounce it and I've seen the human suffering that is being caused by children drowning in a river. Yeah. They're going to start dying in the desert now that summer months are, are coming. They're being raped. They're being being turned into sex slaves until our Democratic elected officials in this state stand up and say that, that they're not going to be party to it. Then they haven't done enough. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, Craig, to your, your point, I, I, I truly, you know, we talked about this the other night. Um, it is bigger than just border security and bringing new voters into the country. It, 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 my, my concern is that it it is a complete takeover of the government by one party. You know, um, you, you look at, um, we, we talked about a Supreme court case out of California. Okay. Just ruled on a couple, a couple of, uh, weeks ago, yeah. and it, it was a five to four win um, for a, I believe it was a pastor that was holding Bible studies in his house, and because yeah. of the COVID shutdown, <clears throat> the state told him you can't do mm-hmm. that. Um, so you know they filed suit, and the Supreme Court uh, decided five to four that yeah the state overstepped, and you can do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Christians need to wake up. Yeah. Yeah. Five to four. That's great. What are those four Supreme Court justices thinking? Yeah. You're telling us that if we have a pandemic, we we we, we can't bow our head to our our, our God. Yeah. Uh, we can't worship our Lord. 
I mean, honestly, yeah. that that is, and, and now we're talking court packing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it would have uh, been, been eight to five if right because they want four uh, more. Right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah you know, and so it's just uh, it, I I don't believe we're we're in good times. No. I, I, that's I why there's people. This guy, uh, this guy, I would say his name, but he has these shirts that says "Legalize Freedom." You know, mm-hmm. funny. Yeah. we fought for freedom, and it's funny. You know, people always think you know, especially liberal people think you know, separation of church and state is to keep the church out of the state. But it was from Jefferson. It was to say, no, we want to keep the state out of the church, right? Because of the controlled church in England when the queen kind of controlled the church. But it was to say that we just to keep the state out of the church. And he says, because he was worried that that the, I forget what, if it was the Presbyterians, I don't know what religion it was, but they were worried that the government would favor them and not favor the Baptists. So the Dan, he wrote to the Danbury Baptist, says, no, there's a great wall to protect the state from coming into the church. So we're supposed to have freedom. We think freedom from religion, but it's freedom of religion that, right, we can, everyone can practice. A Muslim can practice. Anyone can practice as long as, right? I mean, and now if we're, uh, if we're a hardcore Muslim, we believe we could kill the infidel. We might have a problem there, but you have the freedom to practice your religion throughout America. And like you said, now that's being questioned because of a, a virus. And we think, right, we were saying not to be conspiratorial, but this is kind of a step for control, right? The fear of COVID is now stepping, even though it's only 1% people die, right? I mean, it's still a lot, but we've had more higher percentage of flu, flu I think, just in, I uh, uh, forget, just a couple, in 18, I think we had a huge, like 90,000 people die of the flu, the, that just that flu season. So we've seen life is risky, but we're trying, it seems like the government is trying to exploit, you know, like they said, never let it waste a good tragedy, but it's to get, I think we were saying, it's to get control to prepare us to become not a strong sovereign nation that we are so we could be ready for a one world leader because how would we ever bow to that? But we're heading, like you said, we're heading, we're breaking down all these things that like you worked hard to establish a good a border, but we're breaking that down, I believe, to get to where we could be a pretty broken country that would be open to a one world leader. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and I don't know if that went off so, too far. So but. no, no, actually. <laughs> so I'm I'm laying laying there in bed last night, thinking about what I want to say, and and, and I think God gave me this uh, because uh, my my um, favorite verse in in the Bible is John fifteen five, <laughs> and it just hit me that, and I didn't bring my readers, so <laughs> I'm going to ask <laughs> you yes, if sir. you will read yes, John fifteen five, and this is Jesus talking, okay. Read it from the perspective of this is our government talking mm. to us. Mm. Mm. That's good. All right. John fifteen five says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Mm. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Yeah. That's yeah. what came to me last yeah. night. Uh, that is, now that's Jesus, yeah. okay, yeah. talking. But it hit me. Our government as it is today, and look, I, I am not a, a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Conspiracy, Conspiracy yeah. theor- <laughs> theorist. Yeah, yeah. I'm really concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Do I think that, that, that there's hope? Yes. Do I think that there are very good Democrats out yeah. there? This is not, you know, uh, Democrats I vote for, okay? Um, but there there's just something not right there there's something going on yep. that that there i you know all walks of life have very bad people yeah. okay yep. and, and um i think that there there's a power struggle yeah. going on um and i think that there are some in this administration that want to replace our hope yep. our faith in the Lord and have that transferred to them. I think they won't want us to bow to them. I I think they, they want to get anything that provides, um, us shelter, you know, that feeling of security, um, and anything a Christian would find, in, in Jesus, yeah. uh, the Lord God, um, 
and, and that be the, the government be that force. Yeah, yeah. and that's why I, it's like oh sorry. sorry no. Oh, but that's where I think it's exactly what you're saying because a lot of times they're trying to seek like trying to be a good person, right? That's what people mm -hmm. in the world they try to do. They try to be good people, like saving the planet, helping everyone. But in doing that there's a lot of selfish ambition, which that's where Satan, yeah. he loves that. He well, exploits like the good. You ask most people, why do they help the poor? Yeah. Not because they care about the poor. It makes me, it makes feel, me feel better. Good. So yeah. it's not even really, because I really have broken, like you've seen the yeah. brokenness in the border. They go, it makes me feel good. Yeah. It kind of, like we'd say, it kind of blesses their white privilege. You know, it's like, yeah. A, yeah. It makes sure. I, when I spend all this money on myself, I'll, I'll throw a couple bucks to the poor and it'll make me feel good. I'll f give five bucks to the guy in the corner. That's not that's not really well, caring about you, the poor. You no. keep you keep hearing the administration, you know, through their press secretary saying how on this unaccompanied juvie situation that we have um crisis disaster and I don't know what words wor worse for disaster but hmm. there there's got to be one because that's what this is. And they keep throwing out the talking point that we are going to be more humane than mm. the last administration we are going to be more well look but if, not, if no. you're running a competition at, at the behest of yeah. uh yeah these children Children's stop lives. it exactly. you know yeah. um because and did you say it's really i've walked through those facilities yeah. i've it's watched gross. those kids yeah. Yeah. okay 2014 the kids in cages i ran that okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i oversaw that operation mm -hmm. and that wasn't pretty, but Border Patrol agents were doing everything they could with what they were given to provide comfort and care mm -hmm. and feeding to, to those children, okay, as they are today. What we're seeing today, 22,000 in, in custody right now, um, it, it's um, – the th that's anything but humane. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's got and, – and I think you said, if I heard right, that from like all the way to Bush, I don't know, I guess it would be Bush, yeah, Clinton, that this has been going on, right? Just a matter of which who's in office to how they exploit it, right? So the cages have been, it hasn't really changed that much, but the news media makes it like, right, under Trump is the worst it's ever been, right? Mm -hmm. There's sort of an exploitation oh, yeah. in there. Yeah. So it's really, yeah. and probably right now, it's probably worse than it's ever been, or at least in a long time, right? Yeah. With, so, well, you know, uh, it, 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 with the unaccompanied, so the numbers aren't. So you tally the numbers at the end of the fiscal year, okay? And will we be, at the end of this fiscal year, uh, the highest numbers we've ever seen? Yeah, I, I believe we will, okay? Um, because what we are seeing is we're, we're seeing um, those numbers grow faster than yeah. they've ever grown before. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you an example. 65,000 apprehensions in Tucson sector last year, uh, last fiscal year. They're already at 93, 94,000 yeah. apprehensions this year, and we still got a quarter, uh, almost two yeah. quarters yeah. left to go through. Yeah. yeah, Charlie said that it was 100. They're saying it's 144%, or not Charlie. Tra it was someone else, but... It was like with it, but 144% more compared to last year with unaccompanied minors. So it's already like gone up. But I think a lot of times all they see is the, the videos of the children suffering and they automatically. Why do you think that they're still bringing it back to not the administration now? Well, we kind of we know why, but they're blaming all that still on Trump. Trump. It's nothing but deflection. Yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, um <laughs> Uh, they, uh, I, I think this administration um, didn't have a complete understanding. I, I think they were overconfident in their ability yeah. to deal with what what they wanted. They wanted uh, they they wanted the masses coming, okay. But I think they were overconfident in their ability to handle the masses. Yeah. Um, what I really like too is what you said about. Um, the the Matthew John fifteen five, but it says this too. It says if anyone verse six, if anyone does not abide in me, Jesus mm -hmm. talking, he is a cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Yeah, and I'm thinking, <laughs> wow, you know. So think about this. I forget the name of the book. But it was a book talking about Russia 
and says the fall of Russia. And I think the guy who wrote it wasn't a Christian, but he basically his conclusion was after studying all of Russia's history was they forgot God when they became yeah. socialistic. Because usually when you have socialism, God tends to go out the window. Isn't that funny? We flirt with that and they're saying you're noticing something strange. But I think what you're referring to is we're forgetting God. We're kind of yeah. getting away. This, you know, because Democrats used to be Christian, but now you saw what do they do? They opened the one convention without prayer. They mocked prayer. I mean, they were talking. They dissed God. So I think that's that's the beginning. It's like we used to have that oh, right here. Uh, whenever we forget we're one nation under God, we become a nation gone under. And that's kind of what we're flirting with. And you just see Jesus what, right, be, right after what you quoted, right after you abide in me, and my words abide in you, bear much fruit, but apart from you can do nothing, which we're flirting with. And then he says, if you don't, you will be cut off. And it's funny because look at Rome. It was one of the most powerful nations in the world, and there's no more Rome. It, is, it, it imploded. It, it wasn't invaded. It just kind of fell because, and then some people say reasons for that. But I think that's where we're headed if we forget God. We will, we will implode if we forget God. And that's right. The hope is that hopefully enough people like yourself, like us, will get sick and tired of being sick and tired and start saying, crying out, praying for awakening or revival. I like awakening because revival, you know, a lot of churches have a revival every weekend. <laughs> but I mean, awakening where people turn back to God and say, you know what? Two plus two is not three. There is such thing as a boy. There is such thing as a girl. Radical homosexuality is not right. I mean, we have to agree to disagree, right? And that's not. That's what I always tell liberals. Yeah. I believe in tolerance, like you say, right? Tolerance. That means we agree to disagree. But now they're trying to do indoctrination, and that's where it's all going crazy. Instead of honoring people's right to be wrong, as long as I'm not killing somebody, like you said, more of almost a libertarian to say, you know what? You do have the right to vote for a Democrat. You know, like some people go, what? Jeff, self vote for a Democrat. How could you do that? But you know, you have that right, right? We all have the we have the right. But at the end of the day, like you said, what really matters is what God thinks. Mm -hmm. What really matters is are we right before God, not how do we appear before man? Because what does it say? What does it mean to gain the whole world, be the head of border patrol, and lose your soul in the strife? Mm -hmm. That's what we have to care about, and not care about like you said the press clippings. Oh, look at this administration inviting everyone, but what are you inviting them to? Are you invited yeah. them to a better life or just more exploitation now in America or just always on welfare and just because you're mm -hmm. going to vote Democrat because people are going to hand feed you? We're hopefully right. What does Jesus say? What does the Bible say? Any man does not work should not eat. We should be productive citizens. We should right want a job. We should want to be helping these aliens get um, acclimated to our society to become productive citizens, right? So they're not exploited here like they were in Mexico, right? And yep. that's the goal. Yeah. Well, so, you know, they want to paint themselves as the party of compassion, you know. Well, there's Democrats that are compassionate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. There's Republicans that are compassionate. Yeah. Every, everybody has a level of compassion, I would hope, yeah. okay? Um, but but <laughs> nothing that's going on on the border today is <laughs> compassionate. Like, yeah. And the reasons for it are not compassion. It's you know, I, I mean, the motives are are absolutely yeah. political, um, and these people will be exploited against once again when they get here. But in, in order to get what they want, in, in order for this administration to get what they want, um, in my opinion, um, which is uh, another uh, voter base yeah. um, uh, stock in the pond again, um, you know. They're, they're having to put an awful lot of people through a, an awful lot of bad things, yeah. mm -hmm. including American citizens, yeah. you know, who are going to be subject to MS-13. You're going to see a resurgence of that. You're going to see a resurgence of, of the um, opioid epidemic. Um, and Arizona is going to go back to the year 2000 when we had that 616,000 apprehensions and, uh, you know, 1.2 million people pounds in, in marijuana but it's going to be meth fentanyl um and all that bad stuff yeah. um yeah. and and i just I, I for the life of me i can't figure out why you do it you know, you, you'd put so many people through so much for a vote yeah. um it, but it's power right it's like it's yeah it corrupts. power corrupts absolutely yeah because right? yeah, they think um, that if it's not affecting their life if they're in right we always joke if they're in their <laughs> gated community with security with cameras and people with guns yet we can't yeah. have guns yet yeah. if they have it then they feel fine to, like, <laughs> so you get rid of your guns everyone, get rid like, of your right, wall like we'll katie bell and yeah. her family they can figure it out on their own whether or not 
they have illegals and she could have the fear of possibly getting raped or whatever they can deal with that but we don't want it to touch us and like you said charlie was saying that it's 98 percent of all the heroin and fentanyl comes from the southern border oh yes and then they were saying that um an illegal immigrant is twice more likely to commit a crime so 50 and 56 thousand illegal immigrants are in federal prison um and there's so many also things of sex trafficking, kidnappings that people don't realize. Like, it's so sad because I think we're focused so much on the problem that they're bringing in, right? The problem. Mm-hmm. And not saying a child is a problem, right? We're not saying that. But what they're allowing. But they're not showing what's actually happening with, you know, not well, to be conspiracy theorists, but yeah. what's happening to our country with the like sex trafficking how that's going on because we say oh like slavery there's there's not really slavery the only slavery is against african americans black people that's the only thing like that type of hurt but it's like we don't realize what's actually happening in phoenix is one of the biggest places Mm -hmm. for sex trafficking people don't know that they don't realize that in a big city but it's happening and so it's sad that that's what Satan does. He expose, um, he disguises himself as an angel of light, like them. Like they're helping people, they're helping the planet, you know, going green and all this. But it's really covering up what's actually happening behind the scenes, which you've seen. You've seen yep. the women yeah, who argue. have been raped. You've seen what's going on to children. You've seen the drug abuse, but yet they're not wanting to address that. They're just saying, oh, well, let's just have a perfect world. Let everyone in, open all the borders, mm-hmm. let everything be fine. And the thing that we're saying is like, well, that's not how it works. That's not fine. Because also what I want to say is that we know this world isn't fair. Like my dad always says, fair is a place you take your pig. <laughs> There's no such thing as fair. Yeah. But at the same time, it is sad how they're saying, well, it's not fair. I, I don't think it's fair. But what about for the people who are waiting in line? We have a family from South Africa that is trying to come here, and they've been trying for a long time. Three, and if they don't years. get a, a scheduled meeting or whatever in September, everything that they've been doing is wiped away. Like all their work. Right, with and all they spent so much money and all this stuff. And it's not just Republicans that are doing that. There's Democrats, you said too, and people who are trying to come over and people, but they can't because of everything that's going on just – Allowing everyone in the yeah. southern border to come. I, I can tell you, Mariah, if this was a Republican administration mm. doing this, I'll be I, I, I'd be uh, I, I, I'd be changing parties. <laughs> yeah. um, it's not about look. I, I, I don't swear an allegiance to a party. Exactly. I don't swear an allegiance to a man. No. Okay. Um, I. I and I definitely don't swear a blind allegiance to either one of them. Exactly. Um, you know. My only allegiance is to where you all know it goes to God uh, yeah. because he's not going to do you wrong. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um, it doesn't change either. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah you know, and, and my concern is for this nation, my concerns for these children. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I've seen the dead children out in the desert. Mm. You know, um, I, I, I've dealt with the women that have been raped throughout my career. Um, you know, from from a voice of experience, what this administration's got going on, there's nothing humane about it, nothing good about it, mm. and, and it needs to change. Change. You mentioned uh, impact to us, okay, American citizens. Uh, 52,000 gotaways here in Tucson sector alone today. 52,000 people where we were able to either see on a video monitor through IR cameras, daytime cameras or whatnot, and not apprehend or uh, tracking where Mm -hmm. we cut sign and count the footprints. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that don't want to get caught. Those are typically your drug smugglers and your yeah. criminals come, and coming in. Uh, you know, and we, 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 we catch uh, murderers, rapists, uh, child molesters. I mean, you name it, we catch it. Okay. Now, here, here, here's what very few people say. Uh, we got all that here in our own country we got to deal with. Exactly. You know, we, we've got our, our American-born... Um, uh, yeah, exactly. that, that we have to deal with, exactly. but now we're dealing with other countries. Okay. You know, um, 
I almost feel like this administration yeah, thinks they've cornered the market on humanity. Mm-hmm. They've cornered, and none, none of the rest of us have that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you, you look at this 13-year-old boy that was shot and killed by the cop in Chicago the other night, okay? Um, I was watching a newscast, and um, I watched a certain well-known reporter uh, talk about the poor boy and, yeah, you know, right. how, yeah. how you know, he, he, he was mentally a tra- yeah. mentally ch- challenged, troubled child. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, this is why the black and Hispanic uh, brown yeah, community right. have such a distrust for cops, mm-hmm. okay? And I'm pro-law enforcement, okay? But I'm, I'm also, you, you, I've been in positions that if you do wrong, you're going to get fired, you're going to get prosecuted, and I'm not going to have any remorse for you, you know. Um, Of course, you go through the due process. All right. Um, You know, we're dealing with these children on the border, and we have criminal aliens, criminal children, uh, teenagers coming in. They're all not good, okay? Um, And we're dealing with it in our own country. But here's the problem is, you know, you're you're looking at that shooting in Chicago with 13 year old and we hear why cops aren't trusted and how poor this child was that he was killed by this cop who had a gun well, right? well, yeah. yeah well I'm, okay, so I'm okay, getting okay, there okay, okay, okay. why was the cop going there <laughs> exactly he was going to a shots fired call called in from a residence yep. okay so obviously him and his friend who was a convicted criminal 21 years old out at two o'clock in the morning on on a weekday um were shooting at something okay Mm -hmm. why is a 13 year old kid have a weapon um you know but make it a race what 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 is going on in this country where we look at the cop as being the bad guy are there bad cops oh yes do 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 cops do horrible things wrong yeah because they're people yeah. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day we're all horrible you know we, we all have issues mm-hmm. okay um by the grace of god mm-hmm. you know um yeah. but but when we start demonizing our police officers yeah. Yeah. our border patrol agents and they are heartless they are jackbooted thugs Mm. they are out killing our young Mm. and not looking at look if you have a police shooting and it it doesn't matter who whether it's kid or not and a cop does wrong no one's going to be scrutinized more than that cop nobody's going to be investigated more than that cop but when you have a political party who has set out to demonize the police, mm. okay, um, and not even look into, you know, what what's the background of this kid or this adult? What have they done? Are they a career criminal? Or, you know, what kind of crimes have they committed? Um, you know. And basing well, it based on the color of his skin. Yeah, so we 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 his age. Got, we got problems. So yeah. you know, I that's mean, why I said I so, couldn't imagine being a cop. I couldn't so, imagine being a cop today. So we're 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 we've got a political party that is trying to turn the American public against law enforcement, yeah. trying to take your guns, trying to keep you out of church. Mm-hmm. Everything that is is backwards. Yeah, yeah everything that is the concrete fabric of the uh, of, of our country that yeah. we look to for hope for security our yeah. government wants to be yeah. but john 15 5 yeah. yeah. what does it yeah. say yeah. too in the last yeah. days of the days of noah what was the days of noah violence and murder and lawlessness and that's where we're headed towards yep and that's where we're going i mean the bible t- that's the thing like you said jesus is not political he doesn't tell you what you want to hear he tells you the truth that that's where we're going to go and that's why we're going to need to be raptured right because it's going to get so unsustainable that God has to take us out of here because it's going to get so crazy. But like you said, while we're having this podcast is we're supposed to occupy and to try our best to be salt and light, right? To try to do our best to turn this ship around, right? Turn us back to God because like you said, we're heading some rough waters if we keep forgetting God and going. Um, I want to talk, I don't know about this, but I want to ask you, so what do you think of like, 
when you're talking about how we need to help all these people and all the hurting. And I love how uh, Rob Lowe, you know, Rob Lowe, the yeah. actor. Yeah. I, mean, he's, I don't think he was like a genius, but Rob Lowe was on, I forget what show. I don't know if he's a Hannity or something. He says, the problem with us Democrats, and I'll see what you think of this. I thought it was pretty profound from this guy. He goes, we have big hearts and we want to just give money to everybody. Yeah. But we're not really good with our money. <laughs> That's what he's Rob Lowe say this. And then he goes, The problem with you Republicans is you're pretty good with your money. Remember that used to be the way it is when we were kids, mm -hmm. like Democrats care about the poor, the Republicans mm -hmm. care about the rich, and they just exploit right. And now it's like you don't know who's it's like who's what even the even the Democrats don't care about the poor or care about the union worker or care about anybody anymore. They're just kinda doing whatever and working everyone. But is he says, But we need to find a balance because we need to be good stewards. Yeah with our money, right, as a country, mm -hmm. but we also need to help people, right? It mm -hmm. can't be one or another. Because I say, I was just telling you something the other day, I said the problem, why my liberal aunt hates capitalism, because we exploit our workers a lot of times. We we keep wanting more and more instead of remembering what the Bible says in Isaiah, don't exploit your workers, care about the alien, care mm -hmm. about, we've got to do unto others, you have to do unto you. But we kind of go, hey, do unto others before they do unto me, <laughs> right? I'm powerful, mm -hmm. I just keep doing, and we got to find that. So. What would you say, Jeff, is like what, I mean, not that you're a politician, but what do you say? I mean, because I think, too, I want to say this is that, you know, it says if you can't, it's talking about an elder in the Bible, you know, someone who manages the church or kind of a leader in the church. So if you can't manage your own household, how can you manage the household of, uh, how can you manage the household of God? Well, I'm going to kind of do a little stretch here, but I think if you can't manage your own country, right, we're at 30 trillion in debt growing, right? I mean, it used to be, I think, just a little while ago with Clinton, I think it was, what, seven? I mean, it was, like, yeah. pretty low. I mean, it's, like, now it's exploding, and now they're saying our kids are going to be paying 80% tax pretty soon if we don't stop this just to kind of keep it. So how do we manage our household, like, right? I mean, we need to get our f physical house in order, right? If you're, how, if you're barely paying the bills, you're going to say to your wife, hey, let's bring in a couple. Let's adopt six children and not, and not get money from the state, but just adopt – your wife would say, you're crazy. We could barely feed ourselves. So how do you, being there, been there, done that, how would you say what is the balance of having the heart of Christ to care about the poor, care about the alien, the foreigner, but yet to be shrewd to say we kind of have to get our act together before we can just welcome every all the hurting of the world. I mean, what so, would say you on that? So to your point about Rob Lowe's example, you know, um, yeah, from a, biblical standpoint uh, give to caesar what caesar's yeah. you know i mean give the Lord uh, Lord. yeah and, and um it, it you know i, I you're the pastor not me <laughs> I, and he says what they when, say. when jesus yeah. said that when they uh talked to him about paying taxes okay yeah. and uh he took the coin, you know, yeah. so on and so forth, and told him, hey, Caesar's face on it, give it get, give it to him, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it, I, I think, so God, uh, Jesus was saying, you know, get, get your priorities straight, yeah. you know. And we don't have our priorities straight in this country to be taking on the priorities of these other, other countries, countries, okay. Yeah. Um, or the lack thereof, because yeah, all the exploitation. Right? Yeah, you know. So do we want to, no, no no country on this earth is more compassionate than this country mm -hmm. with, with yeah people it, say we're the worst country but yet we everyone turns everyone to us for help it's so funny it's with crazy. its time and with its money and, and with, with with its opportunities humanitarian too. Yeah. it's believers yeah. you know mission trips exactly. you know and, and going and helping and, and doing doing what yeah. what you can do we still give uh, far more money than any other country in the world absolutely but but the the, the problem like honduras el salvador you know it is the corruption mm -hmm. where you know, i mean we're giving millions and millions of dollars every year to those countries but it goes to the corrupt people, <laughs> to, to corrupt people who who bank it, yeah. you know. Harris should go um, down there and distribute it, make sure it's yeah. going to the right places, right? Well, well yeah, I guess, yeah. you know. But but um, I, I, I being a Christian man and seeing what I've seen, um, and seeing what I'm seeing, hmm. it's not about humanity. It's not about compassion. Okay, um, you're charging the, the, the base. The, 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 yeah. Um, if it were, 
I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation if I truly thought that this was about. Now, would I would I agree with it? I, I'd have issue with it. You know, there's better ways of taking care of these children than, than what's going on today. Yeah. Okay. Um, your and heart. It's not, a, it's not really either. I would think you'd say it's not really a money issue because we're throwing a lot of money at it. It's just the use of that money and maybe better, uh, what do you call it, vetting, better screening mm-hmm. of saying, why are you coming here? Because I wanted to ask you this too. I don't mean to get off on this. But when the cartel is part of these getting these kids and people in, I would believe because my family was mafia. So once you dance with the devil, you're in the, you know, like one time I was going through a situation, but my uncle Mike said, hey, we could take care of that for you. And my cousin says, don't even think about it. Because if you did, not that I would, but he just said that to me because don't even think about it. Because once you do that, you're in, you're going to be, you're going to owe them. Remember like God, you're going to, I'm going to ask you for a favor. I mean, that's the way. So, do you, I mean, I'm believing the criminal trail doesn't end at the border. It probably there's some con- link, right? If they think they can use them, right? To make oh yeah. Something. So you know. So it doesn't um, just stop there. If you look at, so if I'm from Honduras, I have no money and I need to get smuggled. So so like I said earlier, nothing crosses that border. Uh, nothing illicit crosses that border without the cartels get. get I mean, uh, honestly. At the end of the day, the, the, the Biden administration is the biggest financer uh, of the criminal cartels right now in Mexico. Because um, oh, yeah, he's, yeah. he's welcoming all their, yeah. their payments. Absolutely. Yeah. And what are they going to do with that funding? They're going to buy greater corruption in Mexico. Better tunnels. They're, they're better tunnels. <laughs> they're going um, to they're, they're buy a lot more weapons to continue their war in Mexico. Um, and, and so, you know, if I'm from Honduras and I, I'm coming up through Honduras and I don't, I don't have any money. They're going to give me options, uh, the cartels, uh, on how I can pay them. I may have to run a load of dope across for them, serve as a meal, and, and run a load of dope, and then I'm free to go. Um, it may be a case where I've got some money but not enough, and then i got to come up here and i got to pay it off. Okay, um, Depending on... Who you, who you get tied into? Or sometimes you may if be, they have daughters, they have to give them to them as like. They oh yeah. Not it, or, yeah. I I, I mean, mm-hmm. what those some of those cartels what they do are, are is satanic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, what they do to people. I mean, yeah. Um, you could p- compare some of what they do down there with what you heard ISIS doing over in, in the mi- Middle East. Um, it, it is, it, it's just ugly. And yes, some of them get, um, some of them never get any relief from, from them because they get their addresses of their, their mother or father or parent, somebody, a family member that's still down there. And the, they'll them. make sure they, they continue to get paid throughout the years by threatening their family. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, yeah. it um, yeah, it's not, pr- I mean, that's what it's funny. Like to say that, like, I don't have your experience, but like dealing with my family's mafia, you know, they act, you know, the movies make the mafia so cool and so nice. And it's like more I studied my family, it's way more Hollywood than it is real. I mean, these guys are ruthless. Yeah. And my dad, was 42 my mom was 17 figure it out she worked for him exploit i mean just con- he says and he goes oh we don't you know as a thai and we don't poop where we eat my uncle michael's he pooped everywhere you know what i mean so it's just it's just lies it's just nice yeah. everything looks you know, every, like you said it's a facade but when you like you've seen it you, you're you've seen behind the curtain you don't see the facade you know what's happening and it's the same way it's i mean these people like you said absolute power corrupts absolutely who's behind absolute power demonic right i mean what, yeah. what we just i said it's sunday you know uh and this is something good for all of us right even good like you said being powerful man you know powerful position but what does it say in uh james uh 3 14 wherever there's selfish ambition or jealousy there you'll find it's earthly and spiritual demonic and so whenever we have sort of like you know right that's the balance of am i having jeff self's ambition of being the powerful border patrol when you're in border patrol or am i really a servant leader being wanting to be used by God to serve. But if you have that in whatever area you are, politician, pastor, 
Border Patrol, you can open yourself to earthly and spiritual demonic forces because the kingdom of, I love what my pastor said, the kingdom of darkness is the kingdom of self. So yeah. if you live for self, you open yourself up to kingdom of darkness, all right? Say, well, I don't worship any deity. I worship myself. Well, guess what? That's demonic. Yeah. That opens you up. There's only two kingdoms. And when you walk in the kingdom of self, you walk in the kingdom of darkness. And, you know, these guys will do anything to make money, just like a lot of Republicans, just like a lot of Democrats. And we have to really, again, back to the issue, give back to God, give back to fearing God and doing what's right. You know, fear the Lord. What did Solomon say? After all his things in Ecclesiastes, he says, Fear the Lord and obey his commands. That's the that's the meaning of life. That's yeah. what God requires. So for just those people who are like, I'm confused. Like what so what do we do? What is is there hope? Like what would you say? Um, Turn back to God. <laughs> amen. That's our main thing is we encourage people to go to church, to be spending time with the Lord. Um a lot of times we put down prayer like as if it doesn't work, but we don't understand too that God is sovereign, like He's in control. He sees these children in Mexico, what they're going through, like he can help them. Yeah. And sometimes we feel like, oh, we need to help all the children ever in the world. But like God, we can't like physically, like we can't do that. Like America, we can't physically help all the children that are hurting in every country. But we know God can and we know that God is in control. And people always ask, well, why do bad things happen to children? Why are they being raped? Why are women being like abused? And why is this happening? Because as of now, Satan is the prince of this world because mm -hmm. sin is in this world because we have turned away from God and people and are, principles. they people say people are basically good. No, as a little child, you see two year olds saying mine, like little children at a, a young age One person said if they had the power little two-year-old would, would kill, kill you someone. if they could yeah. they're just too <laughs> weak right? but like have, you take their toy and if yeah. they had the power of god <laughs> we all have that in us and that's why we need to not only because what you've learned right you have to submit to authorities and we talk about the centurion soldier he was able to tell his officers where to come and to go yeah. because he was submitted but for us we don't just submit to the government right we submit to god first and so if they tell us no you can't meet no mm -hmm. you have to we just have to let all the borders be open and let we can say hey like we need to submit to god and Remember what god Corey wants Tim, us to i like do. what cory tim boom's father yeah. said in the movie hiding place he said submit to the laws of land right unless. like romans 13 unless they break the laws of god exactly right? they say you have to have a board like china you can only have two kids you have to have abortion then we have to respectfully disagree know, with the law because the that. law is breaking the ultimate law of God. Yeah. So, so besides like just people being overwhelmed and discouraged, what are what's some hope that I guess you could give them and some things that you could see even later down the road like happening? What are your, your thoughts on that? Uh, the midterm elections. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I mean, honestly. Yeah. And, and that's not to say I won't vote for a Democrat yeah. dur during the midterm elections. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, I've seen some really bad Republicans, yeah. you know, that claim they do so much and they do absolutely nothing. They just give you lip service. Exactly. It's not about party to me. It's about who's going to do what or what's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. The problem I've got with this party is that it seems like the perfect storm is hit and we got an awful lot that have an agenda that is anti-American, yeah. which if you— if you're going to you, – where's the hope? The hope is that let's stabilize our country, and then we can do more Amen. for other countries. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Get it's not order. about not helping these kids. It's yeah. not about being a racist and not mm -hmm. liking brown-skinned yeah. skin people. It, it's, it, it's about the rule of law. Yeah. It, it, it's about, you know, what can we do – to maybe, I don't know if this is the right word, but to force their leadership, their politicians, to do more for their, for their own people. Them, yeah. Um, you know, because we are given substantial money. You, may, may, you know, we do send mission trips down there. Um, I think from a spiritual standpoint, you know, thoughts and prayers, mm -hmm. you know, th thoughts and yeah. prayers. There's plenty of... of you know, stuff we can do um, to to help, but not till we get, as you say, our own house in order. Exactly. You know, we can help so much more if our own house is or, mm -hmm. in order. Yeah. You know, and I say thoughts and prayers, and, and you know, um, 
what's the big line coming from, you know, the people of the Democratic Party don't right pray, now? Don't pray. So, uh, you you have a mass shooting, you know, and everything. We're not going to pray for you. Everything's a mass shooting nowadays also, you know, because uh, they want the guns, all right? Yep. Uh, but uh, I think how crazy this. So you don't have you don't have, have police, it, but, yeah. and now you're not going to let have guns. So you know, I thought that com- that commercial from from uh, Trump was pretty crazy. Where uh, you have a 19 minute hold, you know what I mean? That's yeah, because <laughs> that that gun sales went through, and it's like how mm-hmm. insane, how crazy. So we defund the police, yeah. right? You say you're yeah. pro police, I'm pro police, because right, I obey the yeah. law, right? The only people who should fear are criminals. Oh, when I was a criminal, case. I hated the law before Christ, but now I love the law. But what? They're saying, oh, we're going to take defund the police, get rid of less than the police, but we're now going to take the, your ability to protect yourself. Too. And open your borders it's and insane. let all these yeah. criminal yeah. aliens yeah. come across. <laughs> Who will have okay. guns and will and say, hey, what's for dinner? You know? yeah. So, you know, thoughts and prayers, you know. I mean, this 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 is uh, another detail that people need need to pick up on, you know. Um, you, you, you have a mass shooting and you have all these Democratic uh, congressional members up there saying, I'm tired of your thoughts and prayers. They're not working. Yeah, you know, thoughts and prayers do work, okay? Mm-hmm. Maybe um, not the way you want them to work, but 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 they do work. But but doesn't that tell you something about yeah. that person? Yeah. Well, to God. I, I, I mean, honestly, it, 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 it's... But you know what's funny, Jeff, about that? Out of your, you said 9-11. But it's mm-hmm. so funny, a lot of these people that say that kind of stuff, when there's a major tragedy like 9 11, what were they doing on the steps? They were all praying and crying out to God. And oh, saying, yeah. Oh, God, help us. Oh, yeah. It's like, wait, wait, I thought you said God, these prayers are worthless. But it was really their backs to the wall because that was one of the biggest tragedies we've ever had on our U.S. soil. And then they're crying out to the God that they say, don't, you know, it doesn't work most of the time. Yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's just all show. Probably a lot of it is, you know. I mean, it's just to look good to kind of, mm-hmm. a, you know, I don't know. But it's just, it's crazy. I think, I think, I don't know, I say this, you know, because we put you in a hard spot to say, what's the answer like this? Really, the answer is God. I mean, it's, we need a miracle. Yeah. We do. I mean, a lot mm-hmm. of it is a miracle, yeah. right? Because we do, our house is not in order. And yeah. a lot of our churches aren't in order. A lot of yeah. areas are not in order. Our own lives have issues. But I think is, you know, the verse I think is, and you jump in anytime you want, but I think is the Romans 5.20, wherever sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Mm-hmm. We have to remember that. Yeah. Sometimes we just focus. You we watched, I can, I, like I said, I can only watch so much news and I, could, I, I, I want to go cuckoo. I go, oh. I just got to be careful because I get too frustrated. I get mad that something needs to happen. Yeah. I hate hearing Hanny. Oh, Comey's going down. Oh, and it's like, no, they're not. Just shut up. You know, mm-hmm. anyway. But so that's my personal. Oh, but I'm saying is so that wherever sin abounds, grace abounds much yeah. more. And as I said to you, is that this COVID crisis, it's been hard on a lot of people. And I don't want to make light of it, right? A lot of people yeah. lost loved ones. But for us as the church, it's really woken up the base. I don't know if you notice our church is mm-hmm. a lot fuller now. And it's like going, it's crazy because people, hopefully, right, the prayers, thoughts and prayers is the sleeping giant arises because – I forget the stats, and you know stats. I wouldn't. You don't know what stats really real, but they said if every evangelical voted biblical evangelical voted biblical values, you know, like you said, not just Democrat, but voted for the best person, we would dominate the elections. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of them. And now the problem is a lot of people are saying, "Oh, my vote doesn't count, so I just quit." And that's what we we're saying on Sunday. No, you need to vote. You need to still believe, well, right? Wicked lazy servant. You don't yeah, want wicked lazy servant department. I mean, out of outer darkness. How's that? So we can't give up until there's breath is out of our lungs. I mean, yeah. we got to keep fighting for the best. We got to keep saying, you know, and know that. You know, like remember the argument about Romney versus Bush, and as yep. they said, or I mean, Romney versus uh, Ob- Ob- yeah. Obama. We said. You can't vote for a Mormon. I love what the uh, what pastor said. He says unless Jesus his name is on the ballot, you're always voting for the lesser of two evils, yeah. right? Yeah. So you got to vote, like you said. I mean, you might not support all the Democratic beliefs, right? You don't believe in abortion. Mm-hmm. You don't believe nope. in transgender. You know, you could be a, a you know a, a, a Christian transgender or homosexual. We have to say we disagree with that biblically because the Bible mm-hmm. says homosexual. But we we love them. Yeah. We just disagree with their lifestyle, and we have to say that. And you know, so. yeah. Anything you want to say? Any last situation? closing thoughts? Cause yeah. I know we... No, you know, I, I mean. Did you ever think uh, your thought you were thinking about? Did you ever get that back? No, I never <laughs> got that back. I lost that one. By um, moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, um, I, I guess the, uh, the positive thing is God's in control. 
yeah. exactly. you know, and, and I'll just end it with that. Mm-hmm. You know, we we can. I'm like you. I get upset when I start watching the news and and hearing all all just things that are because you know how much of it is lies more than ju- the average. Well, person. yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they done that just yeah. f- and things that are just absolutely foreign to being an American. You know, mm-hmm. um, and um, but at, at the end of the day, the hope is that that uh, you know, yeah. God is well. It's not the hope because I know God's in control, and always in control, and uh, we we could put our faith and hope in Him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, we have to I, I, first submit to Him. That's the key. Is like sit, submit to God, resist the devil, and He will flee. Mm-hmm. But the everyone just wants the devil to flee, the bad to go away, <laughs> but they don't want to submit to God and humble themselves. And like what does it say after? And you. draw near to God. We yeah. got to not just. They got to then draw near to God and he'll draw near to you exactly. once you submit. Yeah. You know, a lot of people want to live in blatant sin and say, and why isn't God why helping is me? How come? Life going well, because so you're not submitted, right? I mean, every, like I say, it's Sunday. I say, you know, as a father, would you say, I, I went to, I said to my kids, just, just do what I say. Quick question. We just do it. And God just, I felt God just laughing going, gosh, that'd be so great if you just did what I said. You know, mm-hmm. It'd be so nice if you as a father, to, you know, I'm your father. If you just obey me as your son. And I was like, wow, you yeah. know, it really and it, humbled and me. And it sounds bad, you know? but it's true that if, we are submitted to God. Like, let's just say it goes so bad. They open up all the borders. Everyone's just flooding in from it all around. Um, children are being taken, raped, like drugs everywhere. Let's just say that happens. Still, God is in control. And for those yep. who are submitted to God, like the yeah. worst thing my dad could probably think of is of us girls were taken and raped, like mm. and killed. Like he would be broken, but because he has Christ and he knows that we're submitted to Christ, he knows that this is not our home and he'll see us one day in heaven. Even though that's the worst thing you can think of, like yeah. people always go to the worst. Yeah. But as for Christians who are submitted to God, this is the worst it's to going to be. Christ to yeah. So when that's where, like, I was in Philippians, like our homes were citizens of heaven, right? We're not citizens of America. I mean, we are, and we're thankful for that. But at the end of the day, this is not our home. So no matter if it really does just go terrible and everything and which, is which, bad. Which we got to remember. God peace. said it would go this way. Yeah. So yeah. he didn't lie to us. Like you said, he's yeah. not a politician going, oh, no, it's going to get bad. He's be like, great. no, it's going to get worse, guys. I mean, I told you there's some guys that believe in dominionism. We're going to take over everything. I'm like, whatever you're smoking, man, let me know. Yeah, yeah. I'm going, that's ridiculous. Oh. I mean, but but Jesus said that men's hearts are going to wax cold. You know, it's going to be like the days of Noah, lawlessness, murder. Yeah. Uh, 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 what what did I say? Will yeah, evil, evil will become. Yeah, evil. good. Isaiah five. Uh, black will be called white. White will be called black. Yep. Bitter will be called Everything sweet. Be Everything's backwards. gonna be backwards, and that's the way it is. You look at the news, yep. you go, wait a sec, wait, two plus two is three now. I thought it was four. I thought it was, you know. And we have, but but that's the thing. We for, we know it. But then in the heat of it, watching Fox News, we go, what? Yeah. You know, but Jesus goes, what? You know, I told you this. And I it's how we this. respond because Jesus in the midst of craziness, when like the storm and the boat, every, all the disciples are freaking out. But Jesus was, was calm, calm. Yeah. because he had like he was close to the Lord. And he and, spent and time why, with the and Lord. Why, and why is that? This is something good. This is good for us to remember for heaven. Yeah. Because I always go, man, she's pretty hard. And I said, oh, you have little faith. How much longer must I put up with them? I'm going, man, this, like you said, these poor, well, these poor guys are in a storm. They're like, think they're going to drown. I mean, come on, have some questions. But why, so what I was told by Greater Brother V, because I will see you on the other side. He so because he said that, they should have rested. Even though we're in a storm, God's going to see us through, right? And even though we're in a storm, God's going to see us through yeah. to heaven. So we have to go. So he's saying, Jeff, Craig, Mariah, why have you a little Don't faith? Go. Put your hope in God. I, I told you this. It's going to get bad, but you do your best to occupy, to pray, to do what's right, vote, biblical values. And the rest is up to me. Don't give up. But also, we know that non-Christians are watching how we respond. (laughs) They're seeing, like, are we just going to be depressed and give in to, like, drinking, (laughs) looking at pornography, just giving up? Or are we Or these crazy pastors say, grab your guns and start fighting the liberals. I'm like, are you kidding? That's what they're living for. It's like insanity. Oh, yeah. Hunt liberals. That's the answer. I'm like, shut up. Up, you yeah. damn. We can't respond you know, the no, way that no. the world would respond. But no. anyway, yeah, that we're just thankful for you just joining yeah. us. We know that we talk a lot, but we're <laughs> thankful right. for <laughs> you and just your humble, gentle spirit because <laughs> we're crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're rotors. We talk too much. Yeah, yeah. But, I always have to live that. I, I always hear that verse. I don't live it, but quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Quick to listen. Slow to <laughs> 
<laughs> so I don't follow that verse very well, but I try real hard. You know, yeah, so. but uh, before we end, you, you want to close in prayer? No. Oh. <laughs> No, no I'm, a, you, you, you I'm gonna it? let you do it. <laughs> the passion. <laughs> All right. All right. We good? All right, yes. let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this conversation. Mm. Hopefully Jeff got to talk a little bit. But Lord, we love mm. you. We thank you, and we do put our hope in you. Amen. Yes, if we look to men, I forget some cute saying I always mess them up, but look to man, be distressed. Look to self, be depressed, but look to God and be blessed. Amen. And so, Lord, help us to do that, Lord. Help us. You said perfect peace have those whose mind is stayed on thee. Yes. Like Jeff humbly said, we look at too much news. We look at the bad news. We forget the good news. We forget that God's in control. And as Mariah said it well, this is the worst for the Christian it's ever going to get. It only gets better. But for the non-Christian, this is the best it's ever going to get. So that should give, like Jeff, has compassion on these kids. We should have compassion on all the people around us that don't know you because it's only going to get worse. A lot of people think if I commit suicide, it's gonna, I'm going to go from hell. I'm going to go from hell to like a peaceful place. No, I'm going to go from hell as I almost committed suicide from hell on earth to hell. So God, help us. Help us to be in this world but not of it. Help us not to be overwhelmed by the sin that's all around us. But help us to say, here I am like Isaiah. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Use me. Whatever sphere of influence you want, Lord. Thank you for Jeff, just how he had such an effect, more than he'll ever know this side of heaven. But, Lord, I ask you'll help us all to do our part, whether it's huge, whether it's small, whether it's in between. But we'd say, we'd roll up our sleeves for you and say, God, here I am. And like it says in 2 Timothy 2.24, that in a house there's vessels of of noble purposes and, and uh, of honorable purposes and dishonor. And if you'll cleanse yourself from the latter, from sin, you'll be a vessel of honor fit for the master, for every good work. And that's what we want to be. Help us, Lord. Holy Spirit, help us to not just be cleansed positionally, but help us to put on Christ, as it says in Romans 13. Put on Christ to walk in righteousness so we'll be those vessels those conduits that you can flow in and through to touch this world, to turn it back, or to res restrain evil. Lord, salt keeps the meat from rotting. Lord, let the salt of you keep this America and the world from rotting. Let us preach the good news. Let us share that we are sinners in desperate need of a Savior, and you are the hope of the world. And I pray that for anyone listening, especially someone maybe is angry, saying, oh, I can't believe you Christians. Lord, touch them. Let us care about those people that are alienated from you, that they right now, that you, Lord, would draw their hearts to you, that they would surrender to you and say, God, what is the answer? Because you promised, Jesus, if you, des if you desire truth, you will hear my voice. Those are on the side of truth. And if you desire to do the Father's will, you will know whether my words are men or of God. You said that, Jesus. So, Father, draw people who are really disillusioned but saying, I want the truth. I don't know what the truth is. Open their eyes, open their ears, and soften their hearts to respond and surrender to you. You are the answer. You are the hope. You're the one that gives us hope in a hard time which we're in. But we love you and we thank you. And I also want to say this. I don't ever hardly do this as much as I should. But we pray for Biden. We pray for President Biden. And we pray for, for Vice President Harris. And we ask God, you said you control the king's heart like a water course. We ask that you would touch Biden. As he says, he's a Catholic, but a lot of people have said, how can you be a Catholic and be this way? But I ask that you would convict him. I ask that you would speak to him. I pray that you would give him dreams and visions and that he is going to give an account for how he governed this great country. And I pray the same for Harris, for Vice President Harris. I pray you'll touch her. And that, Father, sometimes I look and go, there's no way. But people said that about me. And if you can save me, you can save anyone. So, Lord, touch them and control May you sovereignly control and speak to this administration. May your will be accomplished. And I want to say I thank you that even though we've gone through hard times, I've seen Romans 5.20 be lived out where you said where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. I've seen that and I thank you for that because you are God who can take what is not good and work it for good to those who love you and are called good and we bless you and thank you so much for Jeff. Jeff. Bless him. Bless his wife, Cheryl. Bless their children. 
And I pray for a blessing on their house. And I thank you for him. And as he's been used by you to speak truth and encourage, you say those who refresh others, they themselves should refresh. Bless and refresh him spiritually and physically. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, thanks again for joining us. Yeah. We're no, blessed. thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, so thank you. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram for the behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. We also want to give a very that we want to give a thank you to our sponsor, Mission Heating and Cooling, and it's getting hot out there. So if you want your AC fix or anything like that, go check out their website in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.